Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Welcome to church. Let's all stand as we get ready to worship. How's everybody doing today? Doing good? All right, so good to see you here early. It's freezing outside, but hey, it's warm in here, and we're glad to be here today. Uh, by the way, if I haven't got to meet you, my name's Robert. I get the privilege of being the pastor here, and we're really excited uh, about what God's going to do this morning. A couple of things before we get started today. I just want to remind everybody to be praying for our students. Uh, they're currently at the Strength to Stand Conference in Pigeon Forge. And just been praying for them this weekend, pray that God would do something in our heart and in their life. And 
just that God would use the people that's speaking and just the music and everything that's happening and taking place and just their time together. It'd be an incredible weekend, one that they look back and know that God did something there on that weekend. So be praying for them. Uh, also, I want to remind everybody, there's some great opportunities coming up to get connected here at Milestone Church. One of the easiest ways to do that is through Stepping Stones, and it's going to be starting this Wednesday night. And so listen, if you haven't got an opportunity to sign up yet, there's space available. We have about nine or 10 already signed up. We would love to have you be a part of that. You can go to the Church Center app and you can find Stepping Stones there. Uh, we'd love for you to be there. We'll have a meal for you uh, when you get there at six o'clock and then we'll jump, jump in and get started. And it's a great way to find out who we are, what we're about, why we do what we do and how you can be a part and how you can get connected. So hope that you can make that and, and, and be there and be a part of that. Uh, the other thing that I want you guys to uh, be reminded of that's coming up is our marriage retreat. Our marriage retreat's April the 18th through the 20th. And if you haven't got an opportunity to sign up yet, man, we would love for you to do so. It's an incredible weekend. It's something that everybody looks forward to every year. It's something we do collectively as all three campuses. And it's just a great, great time to grow, to get away. I believe last week in this service, I said to get away from your spouse, but I meant to say get away with your spouse. And so it's a great opportunity to do that and uh, grow in your faith and relationship with the Lord. So I really encourage you to be a part of that. Also, listen, if you're looking to get connected in groups, we have some great groups available. Uh, a couple of new ones that are getting started this month. The men's group got kicked off last week and I think they had around 10 or 11 guys show up and that's incredible and that's awesome and thankful and grateful for that. Uh, but also Mary Ann's got a group that's kicking off on the 25th, I believe, of January. And so if you're looking to get connected, looking to be a part, looking to find some people that you can do life with, do community with, grow in your faith with, then man, go to our uh, Church Center app and find the group section on there. And if you need help doing any of that, please stop by our Next Steps table. We'll help you get connected and help you download all that stuff on your smartphone and so on and so forth. Hey, if you're here for the first time, again, we welcome you. Be sure that you fill out a Connect card. There should be a QR code behind me. Uh, you can take your phone out and pull out the phone app. You can scan that, and it'll take you right to a digital card. It's real quick, real simple, real easy. Or if you prefer to find to fill out a hard copy, then there are some available at our Next Steps area. And then as we conclude this morning, I want to thank you guys for your faithfulness in giving. Just remember there's multiple ways that you can give here. At Milestone Church, uh, you can text 84321. Uh, if you've never given that way before, it's real simple. You just type in that number, type in the amount that you want to contribute, hit send. If you've never done it that way, it'll send you a link. It takes a couple of minutes to set that up. But once you get that set up, it takes about like, you know, less than 30 seconds to give that way. Now, I know a lot of people sometimes wonder, it's like, well, what if I put too much or I didn't put what I wanted to and I hit send? All you have to do is type in refund and hit that and it'll start you all over again. So it's real simple, real safe, real secure, and uh, it's one of the easiest ways to give. You can also give online or through the Church Center app, and uh, you can give by check or cash as you go out the door. There's an offer box there. But more importantly than that, I want us to take a moment and pray. Uh, we've got a great, great uh, friend of mine uh, here with us this morning who, to some of you, may not need an introduction, but to others, um, you may not know who he is. His name's Kenny Evans, and uh, he is a fantastic uh, guy who loves the Lord. Uh, he's actually an evangelist, and he travels all over, and he's sharing his story. His wife, Mary Ann, uh, has been here for a long time, her and Kenny and their family. And, uh, of course, if you know Tyler, that's their son, and Lane and Savannah. And so it's just uh, they're a great, great family, big part of this church. And we're grateful to have Kenny here with us today. He's going to share with you here in a little bit, and so I'm thankful and grateful for him. And uh, I just pray that you would just... Uh, Give him a warm welcome as he comes and be attentive as you are to me. Give him an amen. Let him know that you're with him and uh, just have a good time this morning. All right, let's pray today. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for loving us. God, I thank you for uh, this church. I thank you for what you're doing. Um, Lord, I just pray today, God, that you would just be lifted up and glorified. I thank you for already just the, the song that we've got to sing and just remind 
uh, ourselves and our hearts of, Lord, who you are and what you're able to do. So, God, I just pray that in these next few moments, Lord, that we would just hear from you today. That just for a few moments today, God, that we would just set aside everything else that we have coming up, things that we've going on. But, Lord, that we would just clear our hearts and our minds today and that we would be open and ready to listen, to hear, respond, and, and move in the direction that you call us to move. We love you. We thank you for Jesus today, and we ask it in his name. And everybody said, amen. Let's stand and sing.
falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest your name stands above them all of all powers and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cry Take a seat. Good morning, everybody. 
That's good. Hey, my name is Kenny. Raise your hand if you have heard me speak or heard our story. Raise your hand high. Anybody? Raise your hand if this is your first time. First time. Good stuff. Uh, my name is Kenny. Um, as Robert, Robert told you a whole bunch about me already, uh, but uh, we, me and my family, we go way back here at Milestone. We go back to the Ridgepoint days uh, many, many years ago. Uh, my children grew up in this place. Tyler, the one that you see sometimes on the drums, uh, but you see him doing the video announcements at times. That's our oldest son. And then Lane is 27 or now, 26, I can't remember, but he's now the worship leader at LifeBridge Church in uh, Loudon. And then Savannah, our daughter, some of you remember her, she led worship here for a good while. She's a senior at Middle Tennessee State University. But I am an evangelist, as Pastor Robert said, but we're, we are uh, crazy about our home church, Milestone Church, and just so glad to be plugged in. I'm on the road all the time, traveling all over the country, uh, doing this crazy thing that God has called me to do. I also sing. I'm actually a performer in Pigeon Forge, and uh, this coming year, 2024, will be my 25th season. We start our shows back in April, 25 years up there in Pigeon Forge. I'm in a show called The American Oldies Show. We do classic oldies hits, rock and roll out of the 50s and 60s and 70s. They call it golden oldies. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of golden oldies music. Yeah, that's the old people right there. But then we also do classic country music up there. Uh, classic country is real country, not this junk they're playing today. Can I get an amen? Amen. We got rednecks in the house. Somebody say amen. But anyway, no, I've been singing there for 25 years. I also, I'm a singer-songwriter um, in the uh, uh, Christian country music world. Got a brand new album about to come out. It'll be released on CD, um, USB uh, here shortly. But then the actual release will be in April. We've got a single. My first single going to Christian radio in 20 years will hit in April. So you'll hear that on some of the stations. And... Um, yeah, so uh, you'll probably hear that on some Sirius XM stations, Enlighten, The Message, things like that. But I'm so blessed to be here today to share our story. For many, many years, I was guilty of standing and saying that I'm going to share my testimony. This is, it's more than my testimony. This is our story. When I say our, I'm talking about myself and my wife, Mary Ann. Raise your hand, Mary Ann. Show her some love this morning, everybody. Yeah. Um, but it's our story. It's our story of grace, and I'm humbled once again to share this story. Over the last 25 years or so, golly, how many thousands of times have I shared this story of grace? And I'm going to get real with you today. I'm not going to hold anything back. I believe in transparency, and I believe transparency uh, really, really speaks to a lot of people's hearts, all right? So are you ready? Here's how we're going to start today, all right? Now, everybody, you got to know something about me. When I speak or when I'm up in front of people, I expect audience participation. So on the count of three, I want to hear a big old Baptist amen. Are you ready? One, two, three. Amen. So if you, if you hear something you agree with, you're going to say amen. amen. That's pretty good. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to turn right now to the person to your right. Do it right now. And I want you to say this to them. I want you to say, you look absolutely great today. Tell them that right now. Now I want you to look to the person on your left and say, pray for me. I just lied to the person sitting on my right. So as I mentioned, I am a, a singer-songwriter. I've been singing uh, most of my life. started singing professionally when I was eight years old. I was raised singing in a family gospel quartet. I was raised in a real big town in East Tennessee. You may have heard of this town. It's called Lake City. Anybody know Lake City? See, they call it Rocky Top today. It'll never be Rocky Top. It is Lake City now and forever. But I was raised in Lake City, went to Anderson County High School, and um, was raised singing in a family uh, a quartet. Do you remember a show that used to come on called Hee Haw? Remember Hee Haw? Back in the 1980s, there was a live Hee Haw theater in uh, Pigeon Forge. Had all the stars from the TV show, Archie Campbell, Grandpa Jones, Buck Owens. So our family singing group, when I was eight years old, we made guest appearances at the Hee Haw show in Pigeon Forge. Singing and performing is all I've ever really known and, and being in front of people. But when I was 19 years old, I was listening to a, a country radio station, and I heard a guy singing on country radio station that rocked my world. I heard Brooks and Dunn sing Brand New Man, 
and it rocked my world. Ronnie Dunn is the guy that does most of their singing, and even to this day, he's my favorite singer of all time, Ronnie Dunn. I heard Brand New Man. I saw the light, I've been baptized by the fire in your touch. I'm born to love again. Rednecks, I'm telling you right there. So, no, uh, but I heard Ronnie Dunn sing, and I, seriously, in that moment, I stopped and I said, that's what I was born to do. God put me on planet Earth to be a country music star. So I went to my dad when I was 19 years old, and I told my dad that I was leaving the singing a family group that we had to pursue a career in country music. We put together a band here in East Tennessee, and um, we started playing in all the local beer joints and honky-tonks on the weekends, uh, playing a lot of cover songs. Got a pretty good following back then and uh, got pretty popular in this area. And, uh, and then uh, I, I met this, this, this smoking hot chick by the name of Mary Ann. She's looking at me like, shut up right now. Can I say that, that I think my wife is smoking hot? Is that okay? Listen, guys, you need to, you need to understand something. The Bible says that our wives are, are is a gift from God. Amen? She's my gift, and I think she's smoking hot. Is that okay? Matter of fact, I'm just going to go, I'm going to say this about her right now. Oh, is that cool? Some of you guys, I, on the count of three, I want you to look at your woman right now. It's okay. We're in church. She's your gift from God. She's a blessing. Say Amen. On the count of three, look at your woman and go, one, two, three. There you go. Bill Hale is good at that. I heard that. But I met Mary Ann, and we started dating, and, um, and uh, con- the country music, man, it, country music was my God. It's what I wanted to be. It's what I wanted to do more than anything. We had our, uh, our, um, our band. We got pretty popular in the area. Then we went to the studio. And we did a cassette tape demo. Do you remember cassette tapes? Anybody out there? Raise your hand if you remember cassette tapes going way back. Oh, wow. How about eight-track tapes? Eight. Woo! We're getting old in here. So then you had the records, which was the, uh, you had 78, 33, 45s. Remember those? Wow. My goodness. Does anybody remember uh, Reel to Reel? Wow. This guy right here, he's 873 years old this year, everybody. Wow, we got, that's pretty good stuff, man. So anyway, um, we did a cassette tape. Be honest with you, I, I didn't think much would happen with that demo tape. And um, continued to play in the beer joints and the honky-tonks on the weekends. And then um, Marianne and I got married uh, December the 18th, 1994. That means last month, Marianne and I celebrated 29 years of marriage. How about that? Yeah. Uh, got married December the 18th, 1994. And literally, almost three months to the day after our wedding, uh, I got a phone call that changed my life. And to this day, I don't know how it happened, but there was a booking agent in Orlando, Florida, that got that demo tape of me singing. And he called me at my home, and he said, is this Kenny Evans? I said, it is. He told me his name. He told me about his booking agency. Now, this was the booking agent that booked all of the live talent at Walt Disney World Orlando, all the major country music festivals and shows all over America. He said, I've got this demo. He said, I'd love to be your agent. And I said, well, I said, um, you got to tell me what's in this for me. He said, I'll tell you what, if you'll make me your booking agent and sign a contract with me, he said, I will have you in two weeks as the opening act for Kenny Chesney in Greenville, South Carolina. So there you go. Two weeks later, I was in Greenville, South Carolina with Kenny Chesney. Now, that's Kenny on the right, of course. You see that silly-looking guy with a white cowboy hat on? Yeah, that, leave that up for just a second. Here's, here's your true story about this picture right here. I want all the young people to listen to what I'm about to say, okay? Today, you young people, you've got these cell phones, and you got these. Now, when I say young people, I know our students are there, but some of you are still young, right? But some of you are going to relate to this. So we got our cell phones today. You can snap a picture, and you can look at it immediately. Did you know, though, there was a time when you used to have to go and buy these yellow cardboard boxes with a crank on the top of it? What were those things called? A camera. Some of you youngsters need to hear this. There was a day when you could not just snap a picture with your phone and see it immediately. There was a time when you had to get a yellow cardboard box, you had to snap that cardboard box, and there was a crank on top, and you had to go 
when it stopped, that meant it was time for picture number two. And you kept doing that over and over. Well, when, it, when that cardboard box got full of pictures, you had to take it to Walmart or somewhere else to their photo department. You had to leave your little yellow box with them. And it took about two weeks to get the pictures developed. That's right. You had no idea what they looked like. So on this particular day, this is a true story, Marianne actually took that picture. The promoter of this show, that was in Greenville, South Carolina. That was actually on his tour bus after our show. So the promoter wanted to get the two Kennys together. So he and I got together. Mary Ann snapped the picture. She, this is a true story. So after she took the picture of me and Kenny Chesney, then she said, all right, I want you to take a picture of me and Kenny Chesney. I said, well, okay, get with him. So she stood by Kenny Chesney. I snapped the little cardboard box. I went, <laughs> we were ready for the next picture, right? So we took the cardboard box to, to um, Walmart to get the pictures developed. When we finally go to look at the pictures, we're like, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. We get to this picture of me and Kenny Chesney. I said, that's a good picture. The next picture was Kenny Chesney and my index finger. Oh, come on, people. Good grief. It ain't that sad. But Marianne has reminded me several times that I messed up her picture. I did shows with Kenny Chesney. Actually, my booking agent, I became the opening act for most of the major country music stars that you remember from the 1990s. Kenny Chesney, Toby Keith, Billy Ray Cyrus, uh, Sarah Evans. I found this other picture, too. A picture, Remember the band Lone Star? Had that song, Baby, I'm Amazed by You. That's me and Marianne on their bus after a show. That's Marianne in the middle. And that's me in the red shirt. So here's a funny story about that picture. That's, that's, uh, I don't remember what city we were in, but that's with Lone Star. If you've met our son Lane, can I just say this? He's a turd, okay? So I took this picture. I put this picture on Facebook a year or so ago, and I just made this comment. I said, I'm madly in love with the hot blonde in this picture. Lane goes and crops the face of Keach Rainwater, their drummer, and says, Dad, I'm really worried about you. But anyway, listen, I went on the road. Go ahead and take those down. By the way, can we give the band and the media team a big hand? You know, here, here's what happens in the average church. You see the band is up here, and Milestone's music, can I tell you something? We're blessed with a music team at this church. They're second to none. Amen. So praise the Lord for them and what they do. But, you know, there's a lot of people in the, in the media booth back there. They literally, every Sunday, they go unrecognized. Here's the reality of it. In most churches, you don't even know they're back there until something goes wrong. Am I right? When something goes wrong, you go, but they're back there. Show them some more love. They deserve a second hand. There you go. But anyway, I went on the road. I was the opening act for just about every major country music star you can remember. Uh, Charlie Daniels, Kenny Chesney, all of them. My dreams were coming true. Um, uh, Nashville heard about who I was. They assembled a team in Nashville that was determined to make me a country music star. And uh, this team in Nashville that they assembled consisted of these individuals. How many of you remember a band called Sawyer Brown? Remember Sawyer Brown? So their founder... And their original guitar player, Bobby Randall, was my producer in Nashville in the 1990s. Remember Aaron Tippin? Ain't nothing wrong with the radio. So Terry Brown, who was on his management staff, became my personal manager. I eventually signed a contract with another booking agent, the Cliff Doyle Agency. He had me. He had a band called Little Texas. He had George Jones. So anyway, they put this team together in Nashville that was determined to make me a country music star. And my dreams were coming true. I was rubbing elbows with the biggest names in show business. We actually recorded an album called When You Love Somebody. They actually released one of my singles to country radio, a song called Teardrop Texas. If you ever heard that song in the 90s on country radio, that was me singing Teardrop Texas. My dreams were coming true. Would you listen to me? Country music was my God. I worshipped it. I worshipped everything about it. I worshipped the live performances. I worshipped the business side of it. I worshipped the recording industry. I want to tell you something this morning. If the God of your life is not the God of this Bible, the God of the universe, trust me, your God will let you down. Your God will let you down. If your God is not the God of the Bible, your God will fail you. 
And my career was taken off. And I was worshiping my God, country music. And although my career was taken off, my life was falling apart. You see, I was raised in Lake City, Tennessee, a country boy, never seen much growing up. But when I hit the real world, I was faced with some things that I never knew existed. I was doing shows with the biggest names in entertainment. And after some of our shows, I would have promoters come up to me and ask me to go have some drinks with them. And then the devil would whisper in my ear, Kenny, you need to go drink with these people. These are the people that's going to make you famous. And so I would go out, and I started drinking with concert promoters. I started drinking and partying with people in the music business. And can I tell you something? One drink turned into two drinks. And before I knew it, I was going out every night of my life, and I was getting hammered. I was getting wasted. Alcohol was a part of my everyday life. I was using drugs. And I'm just going to be real with you. I was living that life. My life was falling apart. And there were days I would wake up and didn't know where I was at. Some nights I probably I couldn't have told you my own name. Alcohol, drugs, and just the life that goes with it. My life was falling apart. I did things that I swore I would never do. And I want to tell you something this morning. I want you to hear this, okay? If you're not careful, alcohol and drugs will make you do things that you swore you would never do. And you can become the person that you never wanted to be. When promoters would say, Kenny, let's go drink, the devil would say, go drink with them. And I was partying every night, wasted every night. I cheated on my wife. I was miserable. My life was falling apart. And i never forget, my booking agent called me up. And um, my booking agent called me up and said, Kenny, you got a... Uh, a show to do. It was the New Year's Eve weekend of 1998, and my booking agent had booked me a, a big concert in Valdosta, Georgia, which is down on the uh, Florida-Georgia uh, state line. And um, so we went down, and we did this New Year's Eve show in Valdosta, and I was drunk the whole weekend, out of my mind. Uh, the next week, though, we were headed home and uh, traveling up Interstate 75, and I found myself alone laying in the back seat of a minivan, don't know who was driving, but we were headed up the interstate, and in the back of that minivan, it's the first time that I can ever remember the Holy Spirit of God showing me that I was lost, that I needed a Savior, and I want to tell you something, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit of God. I'm so thankful that even in our lowest place, we're not out of reach. And in the back of that van, God showed me that I was a lost man. Now, here's the deal. I want you to hear me. I was raised singing in church. I knew all the gospel songs. I could have quoted a few Bible verses. Listen, I had a head knowledge. You've heard this a thousand times. I had a head knowledge of Jesus, but I didn't have a heart knowledge of Jesus. Did you know there's a lot of people going to church every single Sunday that are going to miss heaven by about 18 inches? There are some of you here today, you probably know about Jesus, but you don't know Jesus. I knew about him, but I didn't know him. And why I didn't know him is because I had never come to a place in my life where I was willing to surrender all and make him my Lord. Country music was my God, and my God was destroying my life. I was a drunk, a dopehead, a cheater. Every other word out of my mouth was a cuss word. And my life was falling apart. And in the back of that van, God's Holy Spirit showed me, Kenny, you're lost. You need Jesus. And deep in my heart, I wanted Jesus. I did not like who I had become, but I also knew this. Now, see, this was the thing. You've got to realize, when I was on the road with my band, so we would go out sometimes for five or six weeks on tour. Every night was a party, getting drunk and this and that. I would come home for four or five days. Everything was okay. you got to realize something. Mary Ann was at home. She was faithfully raising my children, not knowing a lot of what was going on when I was on the road. She had no idea about the infidelity. She didn't know about a lot of the wickedness in my life, 
But in the back of that van, God showed me I needed Jesus. Here's what I knew in my heart. In order for me to truly surrender to Jesus, I was going to have to come clean to my wife. Can I just be real with you? It scared the snot out of me. Because if you know my wife, she is a praying woman. She's probably the most faithful person I know to study Scripture. She's a sweet angel. But you make her mad, and she's a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'll just be real with you. I'm man enough to say this. I'm afraid of my wife when she's mad. There you go. But I knew I was going to have to come clean. And i never forget, we, we got home from this trip that I had been on, and um, it's amazing how sometimes God will just open the door for things to happen. I got home from this trip. Uh, we, we, we sat down. We put our kids to bed, and about 11 o'clock, we sat down and, um, in our living room, and Marianne looked at me. She said, Kenny, she said, is, is everything okay? You look like something's wrong. And I said, Marianne, I said, it's funny you ask. I said, there's a lot wrong. And she said, what is it? And I looked at her, and I said, I'm about to break your heart. She said, what do you mean? And I said, I'm so sorry. I seen tears well up in her eyes. She said, what is it? And on that night, in our living room at about 11 o'clock, I confessed everything to my wife. I told her about the alcohol, the drugs, the adultery. And I seen so much hurt in her eyes that it devastated me. And I fell to my knees and I buried my face in the palms of my hands and I just began to weep because of who I had become. And if I could just be real with you today, I expected Mary Ann to say, get out, you don't live here anymore. I expected her to say, call your lawyer, I'll call mine, it's over. But on my knees, weeping in our living room, Marianne ran to me. Don't know how long it took. Felt like a split second. Her arms were around me. And I'll never forget hearing these words. She whispered in my ear. She said, I love you and I forgive you. Let's make this work. I had never witnessed this before. I had never experienced that kind of grace. She said, let's make our marriage work. And I looked at her. I said, Marianne, I'm so sorry. I said, but the only way this marriage is going to work is I have to give my life to Jesus. I'm lost, and I need to be saved. The only way our home will be what it's supposed to be, the only way my career will be what it needs to be, is i got to have Jesus a part of everything. My wife showed me grace. And I like to say this. When it comes to God... Grace is when He gives you and I what we don't deserve. And mercy is when He holds back what we do deserve. And I'm so thankful for grace and mercy. And I looked at Marianne and I said, I need Jesus. I'm lost and I need Jesus. We went to church the next Sunday morning, Beach Park Baptist Church in Oliver Springs. And I'm, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember what the preacher was saying that morning because God's Holy Spirit was convicting me of my sin. I knew when it came time for the invitation, though, where I was going to be. They started singing the invitation song. Without Him I could do nothing. Without Him I'd surely fail. Without Him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Have you ever heard this song? Jesus Oh, Jesus, do you know him today? Do not turn him away. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, without him how lost I would be. And as they sang that song that morning, I came to the altar and I fell on my face before God. And listen to me. I fell on my face before God, a drunk a dopehead, a cheater, a liar. But when I fell to my knees on that day, I didn't know how to pray. I said, God, here I am. I said, I'm a mess. I'm everything I'm not supposed to be. And I said this. I said, God, if there's a certain way to do this, I don't know how to do it. But I know I need Jesus. 
And I said, I'm begging you today, please change my life. Please change my heart. I want Jesus. And I want to tell you what happened that day. On that day, I got saved, and I've never been the same. Jesus changed my life. Now, I'm about to get all up in your grill for a minute, okay? So just stick with me, all right? Did you hear what I said? On that day, Jesus changed me. My life verse is 2 Corinthians 5.17. And this is what the Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That verse of Scripture is crystal clear, dear friend. If you're truly saved, you're truly changed. The old things pass away, and behold, all things are become new. Now, does that mean you're going to live a perfect life? Absolutely not. Will you make mistakes? I make them every day. Matter of fact, I have to daily say, God, I screwed up again. Please forgive me. But that verse is clear. If you meet Jesus, if it's real, then a change takes place. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to, to beat you down today. I did come to tell you the truth. It bothers me when I hear somebody say, oh, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, and they're still living like the devil. Something's wrong with that picture. Listen to me. Where there is no change, there is no salvation. That's Scripture. That ain't the Word of Kenny. That's the Word of God. Because when you become a child of God, He changes you. People today ask me, Kenny, how do you know you got saved? Well, I don't deserve it because Ephesians 2 says I got saved by grace through faith. But they say, how do you know you got saved? I know I got saved because Jesus changed my heart. I like to even say it this way. Some people call this the hillbilly translation. But now listen, I know I got saved because my want to's changed. I used to want to go out and get hammered with people in the music business. I used to enjoy going out and getting drunk. I used to enjoy getting high. I used to enjoy all the things of the world. But when Jesus saved me, he changed my want-tos. I didn't want to party anymore. I didn't want to live for the world. I wanted to live for the one that saved me and set me free. Can I ask you this morning? Now listen to me, I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm glad you're here today. Can I tell you something? Coming to church every single Sunday is not what's going to get you to heaven. Singing every song that the band sings is not what's going to get you to heaven. What's going to get you and I to heaven is for the blood of Jesus to change who we are. Now I want to ask you something. Do you remember... When he changed you. I'm not asking you, can you go back to the year, the calendar date, the day of the week. But can you go back to that time when you know Jesus changed you. I believe this. Now hear me out. If you can't remember the time when he changed you, dear friend, I don't know that you ever got saved. Well, Kenny, that's awful judgmental. No, it's not. Every person in this room, we can all go back through the course of our lifetime. There are things we'll never forget. I'll never forget my wedding day. How many of you remember your wedding day? Wave your hand like this right here. Huh? How about your anniversary? Anybody remember that? What about a birthday? What about a graduation? What about a ball game? What about all these things? Some of us can go back and we can relive things in detail. If you can go back and relive your marriage in detail, if you can go back and you can relive your graduation in detail, if you can relive that ball game in detail, if you can remember all these things but you can't remember when you got saved, something's wrong. I'll never forget the day I got saved. I know I'm saved because he changed me. But you see, there's another reason I know I'm saved. I also know I'm a saved man because I can't sin and get away with it anymore. Now, what does that mean? What that means is this, is when you get saved and God becomes your father, there will be a hatred for sin. 
Does it mean you're not going to sin? Absolutely not. We're going to mess up every day. But I can tell you before God on this day, when I sin, it bothers me and I hate it. Matter of fact, there's a verse of Scripture in Hebrews chapter 12 that says this in verse 8. But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Lead that up. Can I tell you what this verse is saying? What this verse is saying is this. If you're truly a child of God, when you sin, the Holy Spirit of God will chasten you, will convict you. You'll know it in your heart and you'll hate it. I like to put it this way. If you can sin and get away with it and there's no remorse, there's no hatred, this verse is saying you're lost and you've never been saved. I don't care how much you come to church. I don't care how many good deeds you do. If the sin in your life don't bother you, you're not saved. Don't get mad at me. Take it up with God. He wrote it. Amen? I know I'm saved because I'm changed. Do you remember when he changed you? I know I'm saved because I can't sin and get away with it anymore. Can I ask you a question? That sin that's in your heart, does it bother you? If it don't bother you, dear friend, you need to be saved today. That's God's Word. I continue to tour. I'm going to try to hurry. They told me i got to be done by 1130 anyway. I'm just kidding. We're going to let God do what He's got to do, but we're also going to be considerate of other people's time. Amen. I continue to tour after I got saved. I'll never forget uh, something that changed my life. My booking agent called me up, and then he said, you got a show at the Fort Randall Casino and Resort in Wagner, South Dakota. August of 1999, my band and I, we loaded up and we were headed to a show in South Dakota. And on the night of August the 27th of 1999, on my way to a show, I was driving a big conversion van and uh, uh, we were headed to this show and um, a 19-year-old young man that worked for his dad's construction company, they got off work at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and him and his buddies decided they were going to start drinking. This 19-year-old young man and his work buddies, they started drinking, and they drank all day long. And at 11 o'clock at night, I was headed to our hotel, actually. This 19-year-old young man, he got behind the wheel of his vehicle drunk. He was so afraid of going to jail at 11 o'clock, he didn't turn his headlights on. So I'm, tri I'm, I'm coming into town at 70 miles an hour. He's coming out of town at 70 miles an hour with no headlights on. I was in a head-on collision with a 19-year-old drunk driver that nearly killed me and my whole band. And this is what I was driving. So really quick, if you'll see that van right there, check, check this out. You see how the, steering, uh, the, the, the windshield is indented up this corner? Th that 19-year-old young man, his body made that indention. It ejected him through the windshield. You know what they always say, that when you're drunk, you get injured the least. You know what I'm saying? He was ejected. He hit that windshield. He was thrown into the ditch, and he walked away with a cut on his ear. Now, listen to this. I was driving that van. Leave that up. I was driving that van, 70-mile-an-hour head-on collision with a drunk driver. Steering wheel came in on top of me, crushing me. When they got me to the hospital, I had a lacerated liver and internal injuries and almost died of internal injuries. And every member of my band was in that van that night. My drummer was in the passenger seat. The CB radio hit him in the face, cut his nose off. My ry rhythm guitar player was seated behind me. He hit the back of my seat. His face hit the back of my head, knocked all of his teeth out, broke all of his ribs. But my lead guitar player uh, was behind the drummer. In some vehicles, vehicles you got what they call a, a bench seat where four or five people can sit. But some, you got what's called a captain's chair. It's a single chair. And for one person. So in the middle of this van behind the driver and the passenger, there was captain's chairs. So my lead guitar player was in the captain's chair behind the passenger. There was a wooden table, square table beside his seat. Now remember this, two weeks before this, we were on tour in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And me and my guitar player went to the laundromat one day, just he and I. And at the laundromat that day, I shared with him what Jesus had done for me, how Jesus had changed my life, how he set me free. And I asked him that day if he would like to give his life to Jesus. And he said, no, I really don't want anything to do with religion. I said, okay, but if you ever want to talk about it, just find me. He said, okay. So two weeks later, this happens. That same man was seated behind the passenger. There's a square wooden table beside of his seat. He had no seat belt on. And on impact, 
he was thrown into that wooden table. The far corner of the wooden table grabbed his head just above the left ear, and the wooden table literally ripped the whole top of his head off. It completely scalped him and broke his neck. And two weeks earlier, he said no to Jesus. Now, it knocked me out instantly. Don't know how long I was unconscious, but when I woke up in that van, I was spitting out glass, spitting out pieces of my teeth, spitting out blood. But I want to tell you what woke me up. What woke me up was the most horrific, excruciating scream that I had ever heard in my life. And I turned around and I saw behind me my guitar player was laying in the floor of the van, listen, in a big puddle of his blood with the whole top of his head gone, he was literally kicking his legs like he was being electrocuted. And all I could think of was two weeks earlier, I shared the gospel with him and I told him about Jesus. And he said, no, I don't want anything to do with it. And I begged God that night to give him a second chance, to have mercy on him. And on that night and a few days later, God answered my prayer. Myself and everybody that was in that van is alive today. I don't know that they ever gave their life to Jesus. And here's the crazy thing. Every member of my band, listen, they were good men. They were decent human beings. But being a good, decent human being won't take you to heaven. The only thing that will get you there is to surrender to Jesus Allow him to change your life and make him Lord. So I close with this. Everybody look this way. Can you go back? I want to say something. Okay. If there has ever been a day for you to stop playing games with God, this is the day. I believe with every fiber of my being that time is short. Preachers have said that for years. But dear friend, if you watch the news long enough, the writing is on the wall. Time is short. No more religion. No more playing games. Today is the day for you to get real with God and with yourself. And I'm going to ask you this. Do you remember when Jesus changed your heart? And as I said, if you can't go back and remember that time, don't leave today without asking Jesus to save you and set you free. And the good news is He'll do it. He wants to do it. And you can leave here today different than the way you showed up. Do you remember when he changed you? Listen, Hebrews 12, 8. What about the sin that's in your life? Does it bother you? If it don't bother you, if you can sin and get away with it, and there's no remorse, there's no hatred for it, Hebrews 12, 8 says you're lost, you've never been saved. Don't play games with God. Today is the day for you. You're not here by accident. You're looking at a guy, I really believe this, I've probably been guilty of everything but killing somebody. I'm telling you, I've been there, I've lived it. But thank God, I'm also a trophy of grace. And as long as there is a beat to your heart, as long as there is breath in your lungs, God has a purpose and a plan for you but you'll never know it till you give him your life. And can I just be real with you? I love living for Jesus. I'll never be as famous as I would have been in the country music business. I'll never have the money I would have made. But the Bible says, don't lay up treasures on earth, lay them up in heaven. I live my life to take as many people to heaven with me as possible. I want to welcome you to the family of God today. The family of God is a cool family. Can I just say that? We're a family that has a lot of fun. We're not perfect, but living for Jesus in the family of God is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to ask you this morning, don't play games with God. Do you remember when Jesus changed you?
If you cannot remember when Jesus changed you, please surrender today. Make Him the Lord of your life. What about the sin that's in your life? Does the sin in your life bother you? If the sin in your life don't bother you, Hebrews 12, 8 says, you've never been saved. And today is your day, dear friend. Today is your day to call on the name of the Lord. Say, Jesus, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of playing games. I'm ready to surrender and make you Lord. Listen to me, dear friend. I invite you to pray with me now. I'm going to pray. Hear this well, though. Repeating after a preacher ain't what saves you. Quoting a prayer ain't what saves you. But the Bible says if you'll call on the Lord and mean it, that He will save you. And I'm just here to help you with the prayer. That's all. So if today is your day, if you would like to pray today and surrender your life to Jesus, if you would like to leave here changed, set free, pray with me now this prayer. Say, Jesus, today I surrender. Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my heart. And I make you my Lord. I don't deserve it. But I do accept that gift of grace. Change my life, God. Save me today. And I will do my best to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. I don't want anybody looking right now. No one looking. I believe this. I believe that somebody here today, you just asked Jesus to change your heart and you've surrendered your life to the Lord. I'm not here to embarrass you, but I also believe this. The Bible says we're to confess when we get saved. Matter of fact, Scripture says, and Jesus said, if you confess me before the Father, I'll confess you before men. But if you deny me before the Father, I'll deny it. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. <coughs> so if you just prayed a moment ago, dear friend, I want to ask you to do something very, I want you to be braver than you've ever been. I want you to be braver than you've ever been. I'm going to ask you to do something. The devil is immediately going to tell you you're nervous, you're afraid, don't do it. I want to tell you the devil's a liar, the devil's a loser, the devil's defeated, and he knows it. You have a God that has saved you, set you free. You have a brother, a friend, a Savior, a Lord named Jesus, and there's victory in that. On the count of three, if you prayed this morning and you gave your life to Jesus, on the count of three, I'm the only one looking, raise your hand. One, two, three. Anybody here this morning, raise your hand high. Hold it up. Would you keep it up? Just hold it up. Don't put it down. Anybody else? Today, I surrendered my heart to Jesus. Keep them up high. Okay, those with your hand in the air, I'm going to ask you to be braver than you've ever been on the count of three. Stand up. One, two, three, would you stand up? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to ask you to do one more thing, if you would. By the way, you're welcome to bring that baby because that would make it more special. I want to ask you to join me and Pastor Robert right here, right now. We're going to pray for you. Would you come now? One, two, three, would you come now? Bring that baby with you. Praise the Lord for babies in church. Amen. Milestone, can we give this brother and sister a hand clap of encouragement and love as they've surrendered their life to Jesus today? Praise the Lord. Can we say God is good? Amen. What's that baby's name? Lathan. Lathan, how about that? And your name is? John. John, I'm Kenny. It's nice to meet you. Praise the Lord, brother. My brother in Christ right here. Amen. And your name is? Josie, hi Josie, can everybody say hi Josie, give me a fist bump, we're going to pray over this brother and sister this morning, I want to share just a few things with the two of you before we pray, get plugged in at church, there's a family that loves you, a family that will be there with you, they will walk with you, they will teach you, they will help you, when you fall, and you're probably going to fall, this family will pick you up, and they're going to love on you, get in God's word, study scripture, and pray, 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 Without ceasing is what the Bible says. Would you join me as we pray together? Father, we thank you for new life in Christ. We thank you for changed lives. We thank you for freedom. <laughs> we 
We thank you that your name, your blood, has destroyed and defeated the enemy. And we lift up this brother and sister this morning as they begin a new journey in life, a child of the King. Father, help Milestone Church be a church that's going to love them like they've never been loved, that's going to help them like they've never been helped, that's going to walk with them through the trials of life. That's what we do in the family of God. We praise you, we love you, and we welcome a brother and sister into your family, your kingdom, in Jesus' name. And everybody at Milestone said, would you give Jesus a hand clap in the house today? Praise the Lord. God bless you guys today, man. It's been a good time this morning. And uh, you continue to pray. Uh, I also want to encourage you guys, as Kenny was saying, one of the things that we love to celebrate is when people get to take a next step and follow the Lord in baptism. Baptism is a public declaration. You guys have already declared publicly. And, uh, baptism is that next step to where that uh, you uh, stand before everybody or actually sit before everybody. And it represents what Christ did within your life today. And it's a great and powerful moment, a powerful time. So I just want us to encourage us as a church family to continue to pray for these awesome people who gave their life to Jesus today. We're thankful and grateful. Thank you, Kenny, for sharing with us this morning. And, uh, man, uh, I've heard you share it many times, but I'm just going to tell you, I think that's the best I've ever heard, okay? All right? And uh, you did a really good job this morning, and I really do appreciate it today. I want us to stand. We're going to sing a song. You guys going to sing one on the way out? All right? Yeah, I'd love for you to. All right? And let's sing and worship and celebrate. And uh, just know that the God that we sing about is reigning and ruling. And I uh, was so grateful, so thankful for what he's doing this morning.
Take this, uh, this message, take our witness out to a lost and dying. 